Hey everybody, Tech and Stroke here, Lance's performance shop, LoneStarMopars.com. My apologies for background noise, that's actually rain. A uh, strange liquid that occasionally falls from the sky, not too often here, so it's a welcome sight. <laughs> Let's, uh, as we crank up the lights here, where we left off, we removed the front accessory bracket, uh, we got off the upper radiator hose, we got off the coolant bypass hose, as you can see, sitting there against our intake manifold. Where we're at now, there's multiple different ways we can go about this. Uh, I was just underneath the car, I was checking for drains on the block. Might be able to get to this side, this one not so much on the passenger side. You can see them, they look like they're going to be easy to thread out. Uh, they don't look corroded or rusted, for example, but it's just uh, a tough, tough call. So, essentially, you can pull the exhaust manifold, pull the Y-pipe, uh, in any order. You can come in, you can pull the intake manifold. There's just a lot of different directions we could go at this point in time. I'm almost of the mindset to remove the intake, but part of me says we might want to drain the block before we do that. And then another part of me says I kind of want to try and get the exhaust manifolds off while the intake is in place. For example, when We've got a shop rag over top of the throttle body. That'll keep dust and debris out. It's kind of sealed in and of itself. If I were to take the intake off right now, we would have an issue where I'd have to pack it full of rags and all the ports and runners and everything. And I don't know if we want to mess with that. So maybe we will try <laughs> exhaust manifolds. Hope that they work for us. Hope nothing breaks. And then come back to this, possibly. Uh, I will note, I have added some uh, labels here. I suggest that you do the same. I'll probably cover it more in detail. I haven't actually done the intake ones yet. Uh, saving that for a video. But uh, when we get to the intake, wherever that may be, we will kind of walk through the connections and everything. Similarly, what you should have been doing all this time, and if not, you can start now, is on occasion, whether it's right when you come out to start working on the truck, when it's, you know, before you call tonight, whatever it may be, anytime you're going to have a bolt that you think is an issue, whether it be the thermostat housing bolts or the exhaust manifold bolts and studs, the Y-pipe, hit it with a penetrant. If all you have is WD-40, use that PB blaster, whatever. Uh, anything that could potentially help break those free, because they tend to be problems. But uh, if you did not know, coming in over here, we've got the exhaust manifold. There seems to be a heat shield above the motor mount. If you see that kind of shiny looking piece of metal off of the frame rail, I'm assuming it's a heat shield. We'll know better once we get down there. We've got two bolts here, kind of at the, uh, this would be, you know, cylinder two, if you will. <laughs> and then coming in three and four, you're going to have studs. You can see one right there, right? So we're going to need to remove nuts. And then back at the very back, you can kind of see it. Uh, we're going to have two more bolts. And what if those go to water jackets? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe they were nice and used the studs, so only the middle two would. I uh, honestly can't tell you off the top of my head. Similar thing over here. Uh, on the driver's side, you're going to start. you got cylinders 1, 3, 5, and 7, so we've got two bolts on this one uh, that you can kind of see the first one. Exact same structure, though, so that's good. Once you figure out one side, you're good on the other. In the middle, we've got the studs with the nuts, and way back there occluded behind everything, including the masses, master cylinder, we have the others. Also of note, I'm um, thinking we're going to need to tackle the starter at some point coming up soon. But uh, I'm kind of at a point, like I said, where we could go a lot of different ways. I guess we'll, we'll try our luck with the exhaust manifolds here. So I'm probably going to go under the vehicle, see if we can break the Y-pipe free. Which, if you can see it all the way down in there, you'd need like a this is one of those times you always think, oh, you're never going to need a three-foot extension for anything. Well, <laughs> this is one of those times you would, because you can see the back bolt. I mean, if, if you know what I'm talking about, if you're familiar with this, you'll see the back bolt on uh, cylinder seven go down from that a good bit, and you have sort of the uh, flange connection for the Y-pipe. Yeah, that's, that's where we need to get uh, on this side. It's not really that much better in part because of the brake booster. But, I'm going to try to figure all this out again. There does seem to be coolant right there below the thermostat. And that's why I'm kind of thinking we could face some of those issues. So, like I said, there's lots of different ways to go. I'm honestly not sure which one's the best. I'm going to try to figure it out though. And I will catch you back here once I've made a decision. Alright, it's so a little update for you. And uh, you're not going to believe my look. 
because it, it went good. Uh, we're using the uh, little Capri 3 8 breaker bar, which I honestly have no idea where I've set. There it is. It's up on the cowl, driver's side. Can you see it? <laughs> I think you can. It's the thing. Last thing up there. What I was able to get to here, which was essentially the first two bolts and the studs there in the middle, we actually broke it free uh, with just the breaker bar. I couldn't use my big extension, which is up here. It was a little too long, uh, but those broke free. Everything's good in the hood. Again, you're going to, believe, twist that way towards the firewall. It'll be opposite on the driver's side. Could be mistaken, but I think I'm remembering right. Uh, again, if you ever have issues, you know, stop and think about it. You know, maybe thread a nut on, something like that. Use a ratchet, figure it out. That way you're not going to, you know, accidentally tighten when you're trying to loosen and snap something off. <laughs> Happens a lot more than you would think. Uh, where I've got issues though is down below. Alright, so the camera is huge. It doesn't like going under the truck. I'm going to try to showcase what I need to though. <laughs> so, if I were to come in and uh, bring you over this way. Okay, this is our Y pipe. I'm going to have to drain the oil. I was thinking I might avoid that until we got to the stand, but if you... I cannot see the viewfinder again because the camera's so big. So I'm going to tilt it and see what, I, what you're looking at. <laughs> so, as I adjust to this awkward angle, the black piece with the yellow and white sticker with the barcode, that is the oil filter. The oil filter is blocking a couple of bolts. Okay, number one, we're going to have what I believe would be an engine to transmission bolt right there. Here we have full access to this. I think this is going to turn out to be a 15 millimeter. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but it's a 14 millimeter kind of crown nut there on the exhaust manifold. And the top side, all right, you can see the nut here, the crown nut, nut and washer. Coming up though, I cannot get anything on that bolt, and it's in part because of the oil filter. So uh, sadly, I'm going to drain this if I remember right. The plug is 5 eighths. I could be mistaken. But when I'm draining that, I'm going to let it go all the way. Then I will uh, come in. I'll get the filter off. I'll assess the situation. Uh, these brackets here, you're going to actually need to remove that 15 and then these bolts here because we will eventually have to have access to everything down there. But uh, under the circumstances of the tight quarters and a giant camera, that's about the best I can do. So I'm going to drain the oil and see if we can improve our uh, situation. All right, this is just something I cannot do in the film. It's uh, just, you know, I'm one guy, I've got two hands. That's my limitation. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, I can't really even look in the camera to see if that's in focus, but we are on the driver's side, there's the starter. If you tilt back up, you kind of see that oval flange right there where my finger's covering. That is the nut on the bottom side. We've got the same thing down there that you can't see. This has gone surprisingly smooth. I'm essentially able to come in. I've got a half inch swivel head ratchet. I've got a real long extension and a 14 millimeter socket. I broke one off on the passenger side, meaning, you know, not broken, but freed it, surprisingly. Uh, there's like a clip on the top that keeps the uh, bolt from turning when you uh, go by the nut on the bottom side. I'm hoping that's a feature on all four of them. I can confirm it's on one side of the passenger side, but I'm going to, against my better judgment, <laughs> try to kind of showcase what I'm doing here. So it's really hard not having my other hand available but I just stabbed that in okay so looking up this shaft which again I don't know if this is blurry or not I can't see anything you just have to turn and break it free uh, this is the one that I've already gotten this other one which again I just you gotta realize I'd like to be able to showcase this but I can't <laughs> with the camera but it's going surprisingly well. I don't know if it's just, you know, the truck's minimal rust. I don't know if it's the penetrant doing its thing, but I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to break these for you. I've got the oil drained. I've got the filter off. Uh, that's the one I got off was the one on the inside angle. The driver's side, I think, is a little bit more difficult than this one. I can access both of these with a really long extension, which you can kind of see there. That's my setup. <laughs> so... Uh, anyway, again, my apologies. I wish I could, you know, have this up on a lift and, you know, another person filming or whatever, but I can't. 
Uh, this is the same situation you'll be in when you're trying to do this on your back, but rest assured it's actually going pretty good, so I will catch you on the flip side. Alright, so the exhaust manifolds have gone surprisingly easy. Everything is broken free, minus one bolt on the passenger side. It's the outboard one. Um, I try like the longest combination of extensions I could possibly string together. I can't get it going. Coming up from the bottom side, I can use a universal joint and kind of catch the bolt nut, but then I'm not able to turn it. <laughs> And uh, I'm thinking I may just pull the manifold and see if then I can kind of turn the manifold a bit and have better access. But one of the other issues I had is down here. That's what I want. I have a bolt. I think you can see it over here. Uh, I can't get it out. Uh, it's totally free, but I just can't get it. So there's no, no space at all. I don't know that having the wheel liners out would help that either. I think they'd be pretty good access kind of here but towards the back. No, the other thing in the back that you run into on the driver's side uh, is brake lines. Those are kind of in your way. On the passenger side, it's the uh, air conditioner parts are kind of an issue. You also want to be weary of the ground wire. Uh, right where your ECU is, there's a ground wire. In fact, I can touch it right there it comes up and they ground it just from the ecu itself uh, to the frame at that point so be mindful of that when you're over there torquing down everything uh, that said what i used is a combination of this uh, tecton half inch and then uh, half inch socket actually uh, i'm guessing that's half inch i mean 13 kind of fits half inch fits better so that's what we run with that's kind of what you run into again this is a mix of like metric and SAE so it's really kind of weird but uh, case in point you know like your drain plug is 5 eighths and some stuff's half inch uh, some stuff's 13 millimeter it's just like I said kind of a hodgepodge of stuff but uh, I think what I'm gonna do is ratchet all these bolts out uh, again you've got uh, essentially your front manifold port uh, you're going to have two bolts. The back, you're going to have two bolts. Same on the passenger side. In the middle, uh, for your middle two cylinders, you're just sort of going to have two studs. And like I said, everything broke free up top and down below, minus the one, which I can't. So I've got the light on over there. You just really can't see it well at all. But uh, I'm not sure what it is. Everything else was decently accessible. That was not. But I guess what I'll do, I could time lapse it maybe. <laughs> Essentially, I just need to come in with a ratchet and uh, free everything. So on this side we should have a bolt right up. On that side I'm gonna try to break the manifold free from the head and then see if we can maybe just tweak it a little bit so I can get a better angle to get that Y-pipe bolt. But uh, anyway that's where we stand. That's what uh, I'm about to uh, tackle. So here we go. Alright so you may not can tell but we've made pretty significant progress here. Now on these, this side, the passenger side, we've got everything out. We've got all the bolts uh, the nuts off of the stud and in the case of this position essentially our second bolt or essentially the first stud uh, this is something that can happen but uh, that nut and washer that's what you ideally want to have break freeze come in with your breaker bar or your ratchet spin it after you hit it with some penetrant you should get the nut to come off slides off and you're left with the washer and the nut with a stud in the block. Now, in this case, and you can note this is fine thread on the nut side that would be facing out holding the manifold. What threads into the cylinder head is right here. It's kind of more of a uh, shoulder and then it's a coarse thread. And that did come out, um, case in point. There's all the hardware right there uh, in order as we removed it. Now this manifold is still in. It's held up by one, the second stud, which is in line with my finger. The Astro is still on, but I think it's losing some output, but it's been a trooper. Back there in the back though, which you cannot see because of said conditions, that back bolt, the outboard one on the collector, which trust me, it's there. What I'm hoping will happen is if I can come in and spin the manifold away from the block, maybe I'll have better access to it. I don't really know. 
Uh, worst case scenario, I've still got that stud in there so I can thread it back in. Surprisingly, the one that came out was not a water jacket. That's all still just uh, penetrant. So uh, on the driver's side, however, just kind of showcase the progress. There we are. That is a factory exhaust manifold off of the 2001 Ram Off-Road. This was the bolt. As I mentioned, I couldn't get it out, but you can kind of see what they did, and that is a godsend, an absolute godsend to have that up top. That means that from the bottom, where I could access three of the nuts, minus the one we just looked at on the passenger side, I was able to have this kind of safety catch, and when it does that, I'm able to just break the nut off. And uh, that saves a whole, whole lot of trouble and time. But it uh, looks like it was sealing pretty well, nothing too crazy. If there was a gasket, it's probably burned up, but again, uh, wasn't leaking, no harm, no foul. This is gone, actually, surprisingly quickly, minus that one bolt. Uh, it's just, again, sadly, it's very, very difficult for me to film that. Chances are it's not going to go that smooth for you. If your truck has been kept indoors, babied, uh, if it's more of like a show truck or a race truck type of a thing, you're probably going to be okay. If it's sat outside by this point in time with the second gen Ram just sitting outside, it's probably going to be a worse uh, experience. Uh, if it's a situation where it's like, you know, a second, third hand, you're the fifth owner, it's your first vehicle, it's been a work truck, off-roaded a lot, anything like that. Uh, these are where you wind up losing a lot of time. Again, I was shocked that it went this well for me. Uh, the truck sat outside for a long time, but uh, I can't complain with how good this went. So I'm going to go see if I can get that uh, Y-pipe bolt off <laughs> exhaust manifold collector. And if I can, we'll have the passenger side manifold off as well. And that will be a pretty big milestone for us. Well, we did it. 10.23 p.m. Friday night. Toll the victory bell. This was actually really smooth, minus one bolt, and that one bolt was a complete pain in the butt, and it took, I'd say, five times as long as all the other bolts combined. <laughs> and uh, Once again, it was the one right there that you can see. Uh, if you were to look at my finger, trust me, that's a bolt head. The problem is, you must have to come in from the bottom because with those clips on the top, you can't get a socket down around the bolt head. Uh, again, I'm somebody, everything I've had has had headers on it, and uh, any other time I've messed with it, I haven't faced these clips. The problem with this one is the clips didn't really catch, particularly once you broke it free. It's almost like if you were on this stud, and it turned, 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 turned beautifully, you know, like three-fifths of the way, and then you get about right here, and you just cannot turn it, you know, type of a deal. And so where that spring is supposed to provide security and a catch where you, that doesn't happen, that failed to happen, and essentially uh, we had a gap, and that clip then was able to spin freely and you don't have anywhere to put your hands in you can only get to it from the bottom uh, this one now if it was like a stud in the middle or these front two I honestly think taking the plastic wheel liner out would have given us great access to it being the Y pipe connection back there I don't think the wheel liner would have done anything for us the frame rails in the way and uh, if you've got big hands like me you're kind of screwed and uh, you're limited to two hands sadly unless you got a buddy with you but ultimately Capri 3 8 breaker bar. I was way back. I like slid back toward the tailgate and came up at a strange angle. And uh, the handle was less than ideal because it doesn't have much of one. But I just got the socket forced on. I had it binding. And I just said, screw it. And I just sat there and twisted it. You know, not the, not the proper way to throw a breaker bar, but like speed style. And uh, that's how I was able to overcome that little lapse there. So uh, this should be ready to lift out. It is off the one remaining stud because, again, we had this one come out. But uh, we've switched to the bra and the Astro again. It was actually kind of dying but still running. So it's charging over there. Still charging, actually. Uh, I had to go in. Uh, I didn't realize it was that late. So around like 9.20, I was like, hey, it's dark outside. And I uh, went in and ate supper. And then we came back out here and... As fate would have it, we've accomplished this. Now, in terms of video, this is probably terrible. It's probably relatively short, aside from when we rambled on about what route we want to take. Ultimately, I guess the way to look at it this time is we drain the oil and we've removed the exhaust manifolds. And outside of that one bolt, it was just a complete pain in the butt. It went pretty smooth. 
again i wish i had a lift or you know like a camera crew or someone else to hold the camera type of a thing and we could have like showcased this better uh driver's side everything just spun off by hand this side i did actually have to sit and ratchet with it i was going to film that and then i left the adapter for the tripod uh in the house so i grabbed it when i had spaghettios but i'm gonna grab this uh pro tip here okay the manifold is not super heavy but it is it's cast iron so there's some weight to it but so uh, what i like to do there's really not a good pickup point that you have access to so cylinder two and eight back there kind of serve as something but four and six here in the middle it makes a real nice like finger caddy so we should be able to lift up and slide her on out <laughs> so that my friends as i dangle precariously over the engine bay is a job well done so let's take our spoils and uh, drop it down right here <laughs> so Watch your fingers as she goes down. Beautiful. As you can see, driver's side, passenger side. This little stupid thing right here, instead of catching, it was just like rounding out and you can only get it to that point. You can actually see where the threads are gummed up. And I guarantee you that's where our uh, nut was giving us heck. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can see the rust on there, man. Just a little bit can make your day or your night, in this case, a complete pain in the butt. But, uh, we've got them here. That's, uh, like I said, quite the milestone. Similarly, as we come up top now, we have access. Uh, turns out there was a heat shield on both sides. But we have the manifolds gone. That means we've got the block, the cylinder head, that's it. There's nothing there. The Y-pipe is still in place simply because of the catalytic converter. It's kind of got to mount up with the... Uh, transmission same thing on the driver's side doesn't have the light but hey it's wide open now <laughs> so um again i think this will probably be short we didn't really you know do a lot but it was a lot if that makes sense you'll know what i mean when you tackle this but uh draining the oil getting the exhaust manifolds off you know that's a that's a good checkpoint here so i'm thinking what we'll probably do next time is tackle the intake that really didn't turn out to be a mess at all i was afraid i was going to have to get you know like the air compressor going and run an impact and we'd have like the rust dust floating in the atmosphere didn't happen uh live and learn i didn't know i was planning for the worst we got the really i'd say that went pretty good aside from the one bolt so ultimately i could complain but i'm not going to because i know we got lucky there uh but i think we'll probably do the intake next uh then maybe like we'll try to group the bottom side stuff like the starter and the you know flex plate and inspection cover all that stuff i don't know i'll you know just we come out and wing it if you haven't realized so uh with that said wd-40 did the trick for me again pb blaster a pin and tuner oil something like that's probably better my advice to you spray it often as soon as you start the project uh, maybe the night before you start the project and then do whatever you got to do up front with the radiator the coolant all that stuff periodically just spray it maybe tap with a hammer and spray again uh, the idea there is you maybe break the threads loose a little bit and uh, get some of that penetrant in there so uh, it will make your life a little bit better in the long run nonetheless uh sorry we you know didn't really do a ton but uh we'll come back and uh, we'll we'll get at it next time so once again thanks for watching lonestarmopars.com is the website Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three. You can find us at Lone Star Mopars. And with that said, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit again right down in there. You can see the Y pipe on the passenger side. And uh, we will, like I said, get at it next time. So stay tuned and I will see you later.